Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about how we can um, interpret our value for r. So first of all, if our r is exactly 1 or negative 1, what that means is that we have a perfect linear relationship between x and y because all the points are on a straight line. Just like we talked about earlier, if all the data points are on the exact same line, it's a perfect correlation. So its r value is either going to be negative 1 if it has a negative slope, positive 1 if it has a positive slope. If you have a group of dots that are just all over the place like this, then that has no linear correlation, and our r value when we calculate it should come out to be 0. If we have an r value that's between 0 and 1, in other words, if r is positive, then we have a positive linear correlation, so something that looks like this. My dots are trending upward in a lineish fashion. Whenever that happens, what we can see is that as our x numbers get bigger, our y numbers also get bigger. So as x increases, y tends to increase. That means we have a direct proportional relationship. <clears throat> okay, our other option is that our r value is between 0 and negative 1. For those of us that aren't so good with inequalities, what that means is that our r value is negative. Okay, so if that means we're going to have a negative linear correlation, a negative slope. So again, we can see our dots are trending downward in a linearish fashion. So what's happening is our x numbers are getting bigger, our y numbers are getting smaller. So as x increases, y tends to decrease. So for our next example, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to go through and label each one as positive, negative, or no linear correlation. And then what we're going to do is we are going to label it as perfect, strong or high, whichever you prefer, moderate, and either weak or low. <clears throat> Then we're going to talk about how we could estimate a value for R, or what kind of value for R would relate to that word. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and record your answers. Okay, so I went ahead and labeled the first part, negative, positive, none, positive slope, negative slope. Okay, so now, this one, perfect, because they are on exactly the same line. This one also would be perfect. I don't have to write anything else because I've already said this one is none. So now we get to the interesting ones. So what are we going to label this? It, the dots are clearly in a linear fashion. If I got out my highlighter, I could probably hit them. If I got out my highlighter, I could probably hit them. Okay. So I think I'm going to call that moderate. If you call it low, not a big deal, but probably moderate. The, this is a very linear looking thing. Same thing over here. I would probably call this moderate. The dots are pretty closely grouped together around that line. Maybe you might leaning a little bit towards high because those dots are pretty closely grouped around that line. Um, <clears throat> okay. The thing that I'm particularly concerned with is that if it's perfect, that you know that this is an R of negative 1 and that this has an R of 1. If you answered none, your R value absolutely has to be 0. <clears throat> On these two, we have a lot more wiggle room. All that I need you to know for this is that the R for this is going to be positive. So some positive number kind of a middle-ish percent. So maybe if you said this was um, 0.5, maybe 0.6, maybe you said it was 0.7, something in that range. Where there's a decent linear relationship, this is gonna be your kind of your value for R. I'm not gonna ask you to do this um, where you write down your own value for R, we're gonna calculate it, but I just want you to recognize that these values are moderate relationships. Over here, this is going to be a negative R value. These points are pretty closely clustered around this line. So this is going to be like a negative, maybe a 0.75, um, maybe a negative 0.8, 
maybe you even, mm, I run out of space, let me try again, negative, maybe a negative 0.9. Okay, but it's got to be negative and it's going to be trending with a little higher percent than what this line is. <clears throat> so what we really want to talk about is how do we calculate our value for R. And in order to do that, we are going to be using a large complicated summation formula. So first thing you need to do is make sure that this formula is on your note card. And secondly, if you don't remember what the summation means, that you go back and you look at it so that you could tell the difference between something like this, which means square all the X's and then add up your answers. And this one, which says add up all your X's, get a single number and then square that number. <clears throat> okay, so we'll practice that in a minute. First, I wanna talk about these two vocabulary words, extrapolation and interpolation. Extrapolation means predicting a Y value based on an X value that is not part of the original data range. Okay, so what that means is, let's say all of the X numbers in my original data were somewhere between uh, one and 100. If I wanted to extrapolate and know what was gonna happen when X was 150, that's an extrapolation because the X value I want to make a prediction about is not in the one to 100 range that my original data was in. Interpolation is doing the same thing. It's predicting a Y value based on an X value that is within the original data range. Okay, so again, if I wanted to make a prediction about um, what happens at X equals 50, and my original data went from one to 100, then that X um, prediction would be an interpolation. The reason we make this um, distinction is because Interpolations usually are fairly reasonable and accurate if your predictor equation is good. But extrapolation, you have to be really careful because the further away from you the original data range you get, the less reliable the predictions from that equation will be. Okay? <clears throat> so, very important to note that the correlation coefficient, that's R, does not show a cause and effect relationship between X and Y. It just says there is some sort of mathematical relationship between the two. It does not tell us that X causes Y to happen, okay? It just tells us that um, <clears throat> whether or not Y tends to respond to changes in X and whether it responds strongly or weakly or in a positive or a negative manner, okay? And one of the things that we wanna be on the lookout for when we're doing all this is what we call a lurking variable. And a lurking variable is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's a variable that we're not um, paying attention to or haven't identified that could actually be affecting our results, okay? So it's a variable It is not part of the study that 
with it may be affecting our results. Okay. <clears throat> Down here, example eight, we have um, an interesting study that says over a period of eight years, the population of a town has increased. And during this period, the correlation between the number of people attending church and the number of people in jail was 0.95. Does this mean that going to church causes people to go to jail? Okay, so these are the kinds of things that this seems like an absurd thing to say, but when the variables are things that people would like to relate together, then they take this to mean that they are related. This, of course, has many other interpretations here. This just says that as this 0.95 just means as X increases, Y tends to respond 95% of the time by increasing, okay? Why do you think that's happening in this case? Not because X and Y are necessarily related or causing each other in any way, but the number of people in the town is increasing. So this is a variable that might be causing both of these things to go up, and since they're both being increased by this factor, they're both increasing at the same time, so it looks like there's a relationship between them that's cause and effect, but there in fact is not. So please do not confuse correlation with causation. Okay, so let's run through an example um, using that new formula here in just a minute. I'm actually going to go ahead and stop this section of the video um, because I don't think that I can finish this example before we run out of posting time. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop here and then I will load part three where we work through this example.